Hi, I'm Jill Rupp from June Taylor. Congratulations on your purchase of a Sew by Number Tote. This is the tote bag we're going to make today. Doesn't it look fantastic? It's super easy and we're going to show you exactly how to construct it step by step. Let's get started. When you open your kit, you're going to find four things. First of all, you're going to have a printed substrate which is this material here with the blue lines printed on it. And this is going to tell us exactly what pieces to sew and in what order to sew them. Also on this printed substrate will be part of the handles that we're going to use as well. You will also have webbing included and this is what we're going to use for our straps. And the packaging insert tells you the fabric requirements. And then you're going to have these written instructions that you can follow as well. Our first step is to cut our fabrics. The great thing about this pattern is everything is done in two and a half inch strips. So you can either use a piece of fabric like this or you can buy pre-cut two and a half inch strips. And you always want to start by starching your fabrics. This is our starch, starch savvy. It's a man-made starch and it'll stiffen your fabric to make it easier to do finger pressing as we go throughout. If you have another starch at home, that's fine to use too. Now we're going to either use our pre-cut two and a half inch strips or we're going to cut two and a half inch strips. You can use the scissors to do that or if you have our shape cut ruler, go ahead and use that because this is very easy to cut in the slots and get perfect two and a half inch strips. So you would be cutting at zero, two and a half, five, seven and a half, ten and so on to get all your strips cut. And all the strips for this are all cut full width of fabric. So you would cut two and a half by the width of the fabric. Now we're going to take our printed tote base and we are actually going to trim around this outer solid line leaving about an extra inch all the way around the edge. So simply cut an extra inch in. After that what we're going to do is turn this over to the back side so the wrong side is facing up and now what we have to do is put our lining fabric or backing fabric on. And to secure the fabric onto the back side of this, you can either use a glue stick like this or you can pin. If you're using a glue stick, you just simply want to make some marks all the way around the edge and a few in the middle. And then you're going to take your lining fabric, which is going to end up being the inside of your tote bag, wrong sides together and you're going to flip that over and position it onto your printed substrate like this. You want to smooth that all out and secure it in place again either with the glue stick or with the pins. When that's done, flip it back over to the front side and now what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to stitch all along the solid blue line, all the way around the edge of the tote. And what that's going to do is secure our layers. It's going to secure our base to our lining fabric. If you want to use a contrast, fab, uh, contrast thread color, something that's going to show up really well on this lining fabric, it's going to help you in the end because we're going to use that stitching line as a template. So again, stitch on the solid line all the way around the edge. You can see our white stitching on the back side or the lining side and that will eventually be used as a cutting line. So this becomes our template line right here. And we're ready to start our piecing on the front. So we're going to find our piece one that we cut, which is this strip, and we're going to lay that down on the number one area right here. Now what you can do to hold that first piece in place is you can put a little glue down like we've done here. We love this glue stick because it shows up purple but then it eventually disappears and put piece number one in place like that. So it's wrong side to the substrate and right side up. Now we're going to take our second strip which is this brown. We're going to position it right sides together with piece number one. You see where the number two marking is here? We're going to find that right sides together with piece number one and pin that in place and we're going to sew in a quarter of an inch all along here. 
And when we're done sewing, when we flip that open, it's going to land right on that particular line. So you put piece two on one, right sides together, sew in a quarter of an inch. And if you like, you can put a couple pins in just to keep it secure while you begin to sew. Our quarter inch is sewn and we're going to flip that open. And because we can't use an iron on this substrate, we have to either finger press this open or we can use a wooden magic seam wand. And this is nice because it has a nice flat edge on and that really gives us a good crisp seam. This edge, this wooden edge can also be heated with an iron as well. We can put this right against an iron and that helps to do this finger pressing. All right, and you can see this landed right on that placement line uh, between number two and number four. Now we're going to go to number three. Here's our placement line. And what we're going to do is right sides together with piece number one, right sides together, raw edges even, and we are going to sew in a quarter of an inch, so when we flip it open, it will land on number three's placement line. So Our second seam is sewn, so we're going to flip that over, and you'll notice how it lands right on this placement line. So again, either finger press that seam, or you can use your wooden magic seam wand to press that seam. Now let's turn this over to the back. And on the back, you can see the white stitching lines. So the sew by number automatically secures the backing to the middle printed substrate and to that top piece as we sew. All three steps are being done at once. Let's turn it back over and continue on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to complete this entire section to the bottom and to the top by taking our next piece, which is piece number four, which is this black, and we're going to place it on the placement line between two and four like this, right sides together, raw edges even, sew in a quarter inch so we can flip that open. And we're going to do the same thing with number five, putting it on the placement line between three and five, sewing. And we're going to continue on with all our strips until we've reached piece 18 here and piece 19 here. So this entire section is now completed and all our strips are sewn. Now we're going to go to piece 20, which is up here and add 21 through 26, excuse me, through 25. So here's piece 20, and the placement line for piece 20 is right along here. And so we're gonna put right sides together like this. And I would always make sure that you flip this strip over to make sure things are going to fit before you sew down. And you can see that I might have to shift this strip down just a little bit in this direction toward this direction to make sure that when I'm sewn and flip open, I will cover the blue line and the grid around the outer edges completely. So we're gonna go ahead and sew strips 20 through 25, and then we will continue on by sewing strips 26 to 31, and our entire top will be sewn. And then you can see on the back, all of our white stitching lines here as our strips were sewn. Our top is completely pieced. And our next step would be to pin any of the loose ends in place like this. And there's one right here, a little bit of a loose end. And then what you're going to want to do is turn it over to the back side and stitch right over the top of that initial sewing line that we made when we were attaching the substrate to the lining. So again, right along that line, all the way around the edge. 
Our stitching is complete and we've turned our tote bag back over to the front and you can see our white stitching all the way along the front here, which is duplicating what we had on the back. Now we're going to actually take our scissors and we're going to cut just to the outside of that stitching line, so about an eighth of an inch away from the stitching line to the outside of it. And we're simply going to just take our scissors and trim. Our tote bag is now trimmed, so we are going to fold right sides together. This is our lining side is out. And we are going to sew the two side seams in a half inch seam allowance. Up until now we've been sewing in a quarter inch, but this is going to be a half inch. So you can pin the side seams together like this. And let's go over to the sewing machine and get those two side seams sewn. side seams are sewn and now we want to deal with this little bottom gusset area so there's a little hole in each corner what we're going to want to do is take that corner open it up and basically fold the bottom with the side edge being perpendicular open up that seam allowance like this and stitch across do the same on the other side so you're going to open it up like this, your seam allowance is on top, match up the bottom with the seam allowance, open up the seam allowance like this, and stitch across. And you're going to do that for both sides. Our gussets are sewn on both sides. Now let's turn it right side out so we can see what our tote bag is going to look like. Those gussets form beautiful, beautiful corners. And you can see your, how well your tote bag is coming together. It looks wonderful. There are two steps left. We need to bind around the top and we need to add handles. So for binding, we're going to take our tote bag and go back out to the lining side up. And then we are going to cut our binding strips. Now, binding strips are two and a half inches, the same size as everything we've used in our tote bag. We need 46 inches of binding, so you may need to cut two strips to reach that 46 inches. When you have them cut, you're going to have to piece them together. So what you want to do is right sides together, but at an angle, perpendicular, you're going to lay one strip over the other and then what we want to do is make a mark from one corner down to the other and that is going to be our sewing line. So if you have a ruler it's very handy to simply mark right on top of the fabric from one corner down to the other corner and this becomes our sewing line. We're going to sew right on the line and then trim that seam allowance. So what you can do is put a pin right here in the middle to hold everything together and let's go to the sewing machine and sew that diagonal line. Our angled line is now sewn and we're just going to trim to about a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then we're going to press this open. Now watch what happens when I turn this over. You have a beautiful miter here so it's going to look great when we get our binding done. So let's take an iron you can either press to one side or you can actually press the seam allowance open whatever you prefer. Then on one long end we are going to press over we're going to press over a half of an inch on the short end of the longest binding strip. So remember we put two pieces together 
So we're going to take the longest of the two pieces and on that short end we're going to press under one half inch. And then we're going to fold our binding strip in half, wrong sides together, like this, all the way down the length of the binding. So we'll have one finished edge, with a, which I folded under, and one raw edge at the other end. So just continue down the length of the binding, folding and pressing wrong sides together. Our long binding strip is pressed. And starting with the end that had the short edge pressed under a half inch, we're going to lay that raw edge on the raw edge of the top of our tote bag like this. And what we're going to do is center that pressed under edge right here onto the tote bag. And we're going to leave a little flap like this, about two to three inches. And then we're going to begin pinning our binding to the tote bag. So my raw edge is here and my raw edge is here. I'm going to put two pins right in the beginning because when we sew, this is where we're going to start sewing. This flap is going to stay open. So you're going to pin all the way around the edge, pinning the binding to the top like this. And when we're done pinning, we're going to sew the binding to the top edge in a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now when you get to the sides, you can open up that side seam allowance and continue pinning your binding over the opened seam allowance. Continue all the way around the edge. I've got my binding pinned almost all the way around, but let's stop about two inches before this folded edge. And let's put two pins here so that as we're sewing, we remember to stop sewing there. Now I've got a big tail here. Keep that big tail, don't trim it, and then we're going to show you after we sew the binding on what we're going to do with that tail and this open area here. So let's go to the sewing machine, starting here at the beginning with our two pins. We're gonna sew in a quarter of an inch all the way around to our second two pins. We've sewn our binding all the way around with our open flap here and we stopped at the two pins so we can take those out now. And what I want to do with this flap is just bring it over to overlap our beginning by about two inches. So make sure there's enough here. And then you're going to just take your scissors and you're going to trim that excess binding. And then you're going to simply open up this end, remember that has our finished edge, and tuck this right inside there, like this. And then repin and finish stitching from here to here. So let's put another pin back in here, and that will make for a perfectly finished bound bag. Our binding is now sewn and that's going to come up and flip around to the front. So let's turn our bag right sides out so we can see how great that's going to look. All right, and then starting in the front or actually toward the side, let's take that binding, bring it up and around to the front pin that in place and stitch our finished binding around the front of the bag. Our binding is now sewn on the front and so our top edge is completely finished. We have one step left and that is to make the straps. The straps are composed of two different pieces of fabric and there are two different substrates. The top piece as you can see here has the webbing included in it 
and the bottom piece or the outer piece here has fabric covering the substrate. So you will have cut out two pieces of fabric, one that goes over the interfacing or the substrate your bag is made out of, and you will have cut another one, that's our contrast, and that goes over the webbing. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to do some pressing. So get your pressing mat out and take your wider fabric, the one that's used to cover the white substrate, and what you want to do on the short ends is press under a half inch. And you're going to want to do that on both ends. So now let's take the other end. It's nice when you have this gridded pressing surface because you can actually measure out that perfect half inch to press. And then what you're going to do is you're going to center the substrate or the interfacing. You're going to center that on your pressed strip. So let's move this over so that you can see the whole the whole strip. And you'll notice that when you center this in here, there's a little space between where your pressed edge is and the beginning of the substrate on both sides. There's a little space in here. And we've specifically left that as such so that it's easy to sew on. And you'll see why in a minute. Our next step is we want to actually fold this fabric around the substrate and just press it. Now we don't ever want to touch an iron to this white interfacing or substrate because it's going to, to melt. So you can either carefully press this around either side with an iron or you can use a glue stick. The pressing surface will work a little bit better like that and you can carefully carefully press so your iron is not touching that white center or if you prefer and you have a glue stick that's even easier because you can just run that glue right along here and then push it up like this and put it into position. We're going to do the exact same for our second piece which is the piece of fabric that has the webbing inside. So this is the webbing that came in your kit. And what you're going to do is start by pressing in under that half inch on either end. And we'll do the other one. And then we're going to center the webbing on the wrong side of the fabric strip, end to end, and the same thing will occur. So you're going to have a little space in here that's just one little layer of fabric that's between your fold and the beginning of your webbing. And you're going to press around the webbing. Now this can be done either with glue or you can press right on here because this is safe for an iron. So let's show you what that looks like when all the pressing is done. Here's a close-up of our fabric covering the webbing. And let's lay that down. And then here is a close-up of the fabric covering the woven webbing. Now we're going to lay these two wrong sides together on top of each other, matching up bra pressed under edges like this and like this and what we are going to do is pin that in place I've got some pins right here we're going to pin that in place and then we are going to sew close to the outside edge of that inner web covered strip
So here you have your strip. The web, the web covering is on the top and below is the substrate that's covered with fabric. This is what it looks like on the front and this is what it looks like on the back. And you'll notice that both ends are finished off because we had pressed them under that one half inch. Now you're going to take your tote bag and lay it in front of you. And with wrong sides up, you're going to center the straps five inches in from the end and secure. So take a ruler and find your five inch mark and then simply butt up the edge of that finish strap wrong side of facing up so right sides together and you're going to pin that in place and you're going to do the same thing from the other side find five inches from the edge butt your strap up against it right sides together and you'll pin in place and then what we're going to do is we are going to sew about a quarter of an inch from the edge. So let me hold this up so it's a little bit easier for you to see. Here's the top of our binding. We're gonna go in a quarter of an inch and sew right along there. Our handles are now sewn down a quarter of an inch from the edge. Now we're going to flip that handle up and secure it even further by going down a quarter of an inch from the edge of the binding on both sides. I've got that done here on this side so you can see what the finished handle looks like and you're stitching right across here. Our tote bag is done and it looks fantastic. These tote bags hold a lot so they're perfect for groceries, for a book bag, take to the beach, or just general shopping. So here's one for you, but remember, you can always pick up another kit and make the same tote bag out of completely different fabrics. And it would be like having one for every season. Here's a grouping of blacks that we thought were really pretty for the winter time. And this one we felt was such a great springy color with this fabric collection. And then of course, when summer comes, we want things that are lighter in color. So keep making these totes and we hope that you have enjoyed the process.